Hey, so yesterday we had our family fun fest. Oh my gosh, thank you for all the volunteers and all the people. We had to have over a thousand people here on campus yesterday. It was crazy. I mean, and I'm going to say over half the people that were here yesterday, I've never seen before. You know, there it was just incredible. Uh, so good, so good. Hey, um, and, and at, the, uh, at the end of our second service today at 1230, we have our annual business meeting. So uh, if you want to uh, come back for that, there's pizza, and it's basically we do it in about a half hour. So it should be done around uh, 11 or 110 or something like that, 40 minutes. And uh, I'm not good at counting today, if you haven't noticed. But, but anyways, that's such a good thing. And, and we got some, I'm going to share some Pretty cool insights uh, that's going to be happening to, to, to us as a church. Uh, why don't you guys grab a Bible or a device and turn to Luke chapter 1. So you don't have to go very far. Just Luke chapter 1. And we're going to start with verse 1 in, in just a little bit. Luke chapter 1 verse 1. We are in our series called Followers as we're looking at the disciples of, of Jesus Christ. And today is an interesting one because this guy, Luke, hasn't actually, did not actually meet Jesus, the, the living Jesus. He asked Jesus into his heart, for sure, but he didn't know Jesus, uh, uh, didn't sit at the table with Jesus. But he's one of the biggest heroes of mine, and uh, I'm going to start with Acts verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, you guys are supposed to be turning to Luke chapter 1, but we're going to start out with the book of Acts, and it says this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on to you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, which if we kind of look at it, that'd be like our, our Littleton, our here, and in Judea and Samaria, which is kind of out there, like let's say Denver and Aurora, and to the ends of the earth, which is everywhere else. So what Jesus is saying, he says, I want you to be my witnesses here, there, and everywhere. You're going to take the gospel, not just to your own hometown. We're going to make sure the gospel goes everywhere in this world. Now, even though Jesus said these words, it is actually our hero today, Luke, who actually penned them down and put them in Scripture. And so why, why he's one of the heroes of mine is because he just didn't just re, uh, 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 bring the gospel, didn't just write the gospel. He actually lived it out. Because guess what? Luke, our hero today, actually is the one, one of those, who is a companion of the Apostle Paul and brought the gospel everywhere. So cool. So though, though, though uh, uh, Luke and Paul that we're going to be looking at, in fact, we're going to look at Paul next week. Both of them did not actually meet the living Christ. Uh, Apostle Paul did meet Jesus on the road to Damascus. You're going to hear about this next week. But, but man, these two made sure that they just didn't live the gospel, they lived out the gospel, and they brought it to the ends of the earth. Pretty amazing. Now, Luke is, uh, would be not only one of the best historians, not one, only one of the greatest historians that have ever lived, but he literally penned the gospel of Luke. And now if you take the gospel of Luke, okay, and he wrote that, uh, and he also wrote the book of Acts, and when you combine those two together, it equals almost a third of the whole New Testament. Pretty cool. I mean, he wanted to make sure that we heard not just the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only the beginnings, and it spans over a 60-year period that Luke, Luke talks about. It starts with John the Baptist, it, 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 right there. It's, it's our Christmas story that we always read all the time about Jesus being born and, and Mary and Joseph, and it, it expands all the way to the crucifixion, and then it jumps into the book of Acts, which is all about the acts of the disciples and the acts of the apostles. Apostles, and it gets into Peter and John and then the Apostle Paul's conversion and then bringing the gospel all the way until it finally gets to Rome. And Rome, all roads lead into Rome and all roads lead out. And once the gospel gets there, we know for a fact it was going to go to the ends of the earth, which it actually has. 
I mean, we're not completely done. We still have some work to do. There's still some tribes and, and nations that haven't heard the gospel. But it is going all over the world. It's in India. It is, it's in Africa. It's in South America. It's in Canada. It's in Mexico. It's in the United States. The gospel is going everywhere. Just like Jesus said, I want you to be my witnesses here, there, and everywhere. And though Jesus is the one that said those words, it's really Luke our hero today, that penned them out. And so, join me today as we are looking at our followers, the various disciples of Jesus Christ, and today is Luke the physician uh, and the power of movement. Let's pray. Lord God, you're, you're good. Uh, we just see it here on the stage with the kids. We, we know you're good in the way that you love us, the way we can just worship you. And so we call out to you, oh, holy God, stir within us, purify our hearts. Holy Spirit, we, we, we uh, look upon you because it's you that make your word clear. It is you who makes sure that the living word of God um, is understandable. And so we call upon you, oh, holy God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, you ready to look at Luke chapter 1, verse 1? And we're going to go from verse 1 to verse 4. So this is the introduction of Luke. And this is how he starts it out. He goes, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. With this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Okay, that's the introduction to the book of Luke. And he says he writes this to a guy, most excellent Theophilus. So Theophilus actually means uh, loved by God. So the question is, is this a real guy did Luke write this to a guy named Theophilus? Or is it to everybody that's been loved by God? Good question. In fact, we really don't have the actual answer. You know, um, there's been debates all along. Is, it, is he literally saying, because uh, the book of Acts also starts just like that. It's written to Theophilus, loved by God. So is this gospel written to all of us that are loved by God? Or is it a real guy named Theophilus? Well, I stand in the camp that there's a real guy because it says most excellent Theophilus, which is actually a statement. Most excellent usually means a high, high magistrate, somebody that's a, an official. And so uh, it probably wouldn't be just the average person like you and me. But either way, it is this. It is, I am writing this to those that are loved by God, Theophilus, whether it's you or us, either way. But why did he write this gospel? Did you catch why he wrote it? He said it in, the ver in verse 4. He says, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. The gospel of Luke and the book of Acts are so that we can know exactly what our faith is all about. That's why it's so important to be reading the word. You know, that's why you need to, you know, Luke is my favorite of the gospels. I, I know we shouldn't play favorites, but it's my favorite. Uh, I just love the, the Gospel of Luke. It just, it's written so well. It's the largest of the Gospels. It has parables. It has things of Jesus. It, it has the Christmas story in there. It's just good. It's deep. And the book of Acts carries on. And it is good. And it is deep. And it shows the history of our faith. And it shows the sacrifice of these apostles. And we see the death of, of James that we talked about last week with Pastor Danny, who did an excellent job preaching last week, right? And, and you see the first martyrs. You see uh, all kinds of stuff going on in there. And that's why we need to read the Word, so that we can know with certainty the things we have been taught and the things that we know and the things that we believe. Luke's gospel is the longest of all of them, I told you. And when you combine it with the book of Acts, it's almost a whole third of the New Testament. Significant. Significant. So who is Luke? Well, 
I got a couple things here if you want to look at that. Luke was a doctor. So that's why we say Luke the physician, he was a doctor. And we learned this from Colossians 4 and, and basically the Apostle Paul writing to the church of Colossae. And he basically sits down and he says, hey, one of my companions is Luke the doctor. We also know that he's a Gentile, which means he was a non-Jew. Uh, which, which uh, he was a converted uh, Greek man, and he came to Christ and becomes a companion of the Apostle Paul. And so we also know that he, he, he's with Apostle Paul. And what's pretty cool, when you read the book of Acts, so if you start reading that, uh, once it gets to chapter 16, you all of a sudden start seeing we. So before that, it would be they went to Thessalonica, Apostle Paul and, and, and uh, his companions all went over to Colossae or whatever. Then all of a sudden it switches to we. And that's when you know that Luke is with them. See, Luke didn't just write about the journeys. Luke didn't just write about the missionary journeys. He was actually a part of the missionary journeys. Why he's one of my heroes is because I go, he understands the power of movement. He understands what it means to actually live out the gospel and not just keep it for myself, but to make sure it goes into all the world. And another thing we know about Luke is that he probably wrote uh, the book of Acts uh, during uh, the two-year prison time of the Apostle Paul in between 60 A.D. and 62 A.D., which is about five years before the Apostle Paul gets beheaded underneath the leadership, if we call it that, of Nero. It was under Nero that both Peter and Paul uh, get killed uh, for their faith, martyrs. Um, Luke, I'll tell you that at the end, so you can stay tuned for what happens to him at the very end. But that's a little bit of who, who Luke is. Physician, uh, did missionary journeys, he was a non-Jew, he was a convert, and that he wrote uh, the book of Acts uh, during uh, the time of the imprisonment of the Apostle Paul. And why is he a hero of mine? Because he understood the power of movement. He understood that, that Christianity wasn't meant just for me. It wasn't just meant to, to end with him. Oh yeah, I'm saved. Okay, good, let's go. No, it's I'm saved and let's bring it to the world. Because of Jesus' words, right? Bring it to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. You know, uh, we, we just got, uh, we, our, our new interns all started uh, just a, a week and a half ago. And uh, we have six interns this year. And we're excited. And you're going to meet them next week. They're going to come up on the stage. We're going to pray for them. And in case you don't know what interns do, basically they are not paid. They're going to school, and they want to learn and see what type of ministry. So we have, we have one that's interning in the children's ministry. We have a couple that are doing middle school. We have one that's doing high school. We have one that's doing our discipleship program. We, we have worship ones. And, and one of them is Becca. And you see Becca. She sings up here all the time. And she's one of our interns. And just lovely, lovely person. But on Tuesday, the, the staff and the interns all did a spiritual formation day. So we went up into Ken Carroll Valley, and we prayed, and we worshiped together, and we, we shared things, and then we asked the interns, you know, to introduce themselves or whatever. And, and uh, though Becca's been here for a couple years, uh, she's killing it in school and uh, wanting to be a, a, you know, worship leader uh, one day. And, and underneath uh, Danny and, and Keenan's leadership is just awesome. And Becca said this, she goes, I just love it here, and I see God moving here at Authentic Life Church, and I want to be a part of what he's doing. Now, get those words, okay? I see God moving here, and I want to be a part of what he's doing. Shouldn't that be what is true of all of us? I see God moving, and I want to join him. I see God doing something amazing, whether it's here or there or everywhere else. I see God doing something, and I want to join him. I want to be a part of what he's doing. Lovely, awesome words. And shouldn't that be true of all of us? I see God moving, and I want to join him. I see God doing something, and I want to be a part of it. 
as you probably would guess, you know, I think Luke's purpose in life is what I think our purpose in life should be. Here's, you know, I wrote up what a purpose statement for Luke is, but this is, this is what I, I think Luke's purpose is, is to see people transformed and mobilized within the movement of God while multiplying their impact into the world. Look at that again. Look at that again. To see people transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ and mobilized, brought together within a movement of God uh, while multiplying their impact into the world. That it's not just about me as an individual, it's about the we as a people. It's not just about what I can do, that I came to Christ. It isn't just that I came to Jesus, we're done, I'm going to heaven, that's all that matters. No, it's multiplying. And making sure other people hear the gospel. And that's what Luke did. He literally wrote the gospel. Think about it. What a cool guy. And why did he do it? To make sure that we would understand and know what we believe. And that we could pass that on to other people. So here's the question I have for you. Ask yourself, could I also have that purpose? Is that just Luke's purpose? Or could it also be your purpose. You know, God always takes ordinary people and once touched by Jesus, become extra ordinary. I mean, is any of us different than just being ordinary people? But man, in the hands of Jesus Christ, we do become extraordinary. God takes ordinary people and utilizes us. Our interns are nothing necessarily extraordinary in themselves. They're just ordinary people that with Jesus Christ inside their lives, they do become extraordinary. You are an ordinary person, but when the hands of Jesus Christ, you become extraordinary. And we have this capacity to bring the gospel, not just for ourselves, but to the world, here, there, and everywhere. And that's our purpose That's what life is all about. It's not to keep God to ourselves, but to bring God to a world that is in crisis, a world that without Jesus Christ, it's hopeless in so many ways. And that's what we get to do. So I have a couple points, two quick points. The first one is this. Point number one is God's movement necessitates that we live out our transformed lives. If you haven't heard that yet, you, you got to get it now. It necessitates God's movement, okay? It pushes for, it necessitates that we live out our transformed lives. Philippians 2, 12 through 13, which the Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in Philippi, and it says this, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you and will, uh, uh, to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Now check out, I highlighted that section. It says, to, you know, to be able to actually work out your salvation. Now, now that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean you, that you're, you're saved by your works. He's saying, I want you to work out your I want you to, here's a better phrase, I want you to live out your salvation with fear and trembling. You're saved for a reason. And you need to work it out. You need to, to, to move. You need to live out that faith. To live out this transformation that's within you. To be all that you can be for the kingdom of God. You know, verse 13 again says, For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill His good purpose. So if I'm going to sit around and kind of go, you know, what's my life all about? My life is to work out my salvation for His good purposes. But it's actually Him who has transformed me, who's infused within me, so that I can now live out the purposes of God. And that's not just my purpose. That's not Luke's purpose. That's our purpose to live out the goodness of God 
to live out that which God has called us and called us to his name so that we may be all that we possibly can be. I, I like what the New Living Translation says. So uh, I don't do this too often, but, but the New Living Translation, it says it this way, that same verse, verse 13. It says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. You know, I'm, I'm a sinner. I, 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 can, I can be a mess just like anybody. Um, I screw up all these different things, but I, I, I realize this, that it's God who's doing something within me and taking this, whatever I am, and using it for his good purposes. And I'm like, yeah, I can't believe you can use me. I don't know why my voice just got high. <laughs> I can't believe that you can use me, oh God. Can you believe it? That God wants to use you, like Luke, an ordinary person, but in the hands of Jesus Christ becomes extraordinary. I love it. You know, uh, most of you guys know I was a drummer, and it started like this. I, uh, fourth grade, I got asked to uh, join the, the, the school band you know, with the flutes and the piccolos and the trombones and everything like that. And so uh, I used to always play with pencils all the time. And so everybody said, you should be a drummer. So uh, Mr. Bellamy asked me to be a drummer. So I was in that, you know, you've seen those bands where everybody's playing and, and you got the you know, snare drums and then they got the cymbals, you know, whatever. Well, that was me, fourth grade, picture me, you know, and, 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 and doing all that stuff. Well, um, uh, my parents, when I was 11 years old, sixth grade, got me a drum set. And it was very exciting. I was very excited. I got a drum set. And I was awesome <laughs> at playing air band. I never really ever played my drum set. My friends, Michelle, Liz, John, uh, would come over to my house and we would play chipmunks play the Beatles. You remember the chipmunk, chipmunks? Alvin and Theodore and Simon. And that's what we did. And they had an album called Chipmunks Play the Beatles. And so uh, my parents also got me a bass guitar that I never played. And we also had an electric guitar that I never played. And I had my drum set that I never played. And, and, and we would get together and we would do concerts for our parents. We, we'd invite them over. And, and we're like, oh yeah, I... Tell you something, you know, I want to hold your hand. But, but actually it was like this. Because it was an air band. And we just played that. And my, my parents would applaud. I look back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, what were they thinking? <laughs> like we bought this drum set for my brat. And, and oh, this is all he's going to do. Well then, in sixth grade, uh, all of a sudden, Mr. Bellamy, he... He said, hey, um, he got the drummers together, because there was like six of us, and he said, uh, I'm going to have a uh, kind of a, a tryout, and we're going to actually use a real drum set. There's a song that we're going to do that we're going to play at some festival or whatever, and somebody, we, one of you guys, uh, all practice on using a drum set, but I want you to do that. Here's the sheet music, and it had all the sheet music, so now all of a sudden I had to learn how to play my drums, and it was hard. You know, think about it. You got this one foot going boom, boom, ch ch you know, and you're like, and you're 11, and you're trying to figure out, well, I did. I won the part, and I became a drummer. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it is not worth the applause. I, I didn't say I was a good drummer. I didn't say anything like that. It's just okay. But I did. I won the part out of the, all the drummers. And so I moved from playing band to being in a band. I moved from, from playing band to actually becoming a drummer in rock and roll bands, and we traveled around and did all kinds of stuff like that. And this is uh, my student profile. Now, I, I didn't put it all in there, but basically it just says this. This guy is amazing. That's what it said. It said, Bruce Fosdick is amazing drummer, blah, 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 and that's me. That's sixth grade. That's what I got to do. <laughs> I tell you this. Because in the same way, we move from playing church to being the church. We, we, we need to move from playing Christian to being a Christian. And that's all about movement. 
And that's Luke. That's what it's all about. It wasn't just that he's writing down about the history of the church. He is part of the history of the church. You and me can probably count back, if we could go all the way back, our roots of our Christianity would be with Luke and Apostle Paul. Journeys together, bringing the gospel not just to the Jews, not just to Judea and Samaria, but to the uttermost parts of the world, which is you and me. Why is Luke my hero? Because my faith pretty much depends on him. I mean, this guy gave his life, and he wrote it down so that we could know with certainty about our faith and what it means. That's the power of movement. That's what it means. I, I, I don't want to play church. I want to be the church. I don't want to play a Christian. I want to be a Christian, a little Christ, bringing the gospel to the ends of the earth. Amen? Amen. The, the second point is this, is God's movement uh, necessitates that we multiply and transform the world. It doesn't stop in Littleton. It just can't. It doesn't stop with just your neighbor. It doesn't stop with you. Why we give so much financially to the missionary journeys that are going on around the world is because that's what matters. That's what Jesus said. And Luke wrote it down. And we need to live out this transformed life and bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. Uh, look at Acts. So you're going to see the very first we passage. Okay, Acts chapter 16. I can't even see. I just got all teary-eyed. Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. So somehow it seems to be that they feel like Jesus is, you know, that God's telling him, nope, you're not supposed to go there. We don't know if disasters happen, but somehow they get kept from going out to Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, Mysia, actually, they tried to enter Bithia. You know what needs to be transformed? These names of these towns. <laughs> right? I mean, what, what, uh, okay, Bith, Bithyania. Okay, I can't really read very well. My eyes are all uh, teary-eyed because I got emotional, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Again, so they passed by Mysia and went down to Trous. Tro sure. Uh, during the, the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Luke has joined the journey. And from here on out, from chapter 16 on, Luke is there. Luke stays with Paul. Uh, while Paul was in prison, Luke was there. Uh, when, when other people deserted Apostle Paul, Paul tells us in other letters that Luke stood by him, the physician, the power of movement, best friends, good friends that carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost world and that you and me can track our faith back down to these guys. Crazy. That's the power of movement. Like Luke, we are all called to join this movement and to not just be a Christian, uh, I mean, not just be a play Christian, but to be a Christian. Not just to play church, but to be the church. And not just to watch the movement, but to be a part of the movement of God. That's what matters. My prayer, just like Luke, is that you would live out the gospel of Jesus Christ and you would live out a transformed life and you would be a part of this movement. You know, we call ourselves a movement church, which really means this, is that we, we don't see ourselves as a, just be a church. We're part of the movement. Luke lived it out, and my prayer is that you would live it out, that you'd be a part of the movement huh, and, and bringing people to Jesus Christ, sharing your faith, living it out. Don't play an air band. Be in the band, okay? Again, uh, Luke um, lived out his faith. And strong tradition, 
tells us that he died a martyr's death at the age of 84. So he got to live pretty long, but he still died for the cause of Jesus Christ, doing that which he always was doing, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost world. The world didn't understand him, but it didn't matter to him. It didn't matter to him. So Luke's purpose, I pray, I want, I'm going to bring it up here again so that you can see. And can you see yourself saying, yep, that's my purpose. To see people transformed and mobilized within the movement of God while multiplying their impact into the world. God uses ordinary people, always has, and once touched by Jesus, become extraordinary. That's my prayer for me. That's my prayer for you. But I also pray that that's your prayer for you. That's the story of Luke, which I pray is the story of us. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you uh, that people throughout history have given their lives to make sure the gospel would reach to the next generation that have given their lives so that they could see your kingdom be multiplied. Thank you so much for the men and women in this room. We pray and we give you thanks that you love us and you loved us so much that you made sure that we could hear and know and accept the truth that has set us free. We want to be like Luke, or that's my prayer, that we understand the power of movement of the movement. Thank you that we're one link. Thank you, God, that we get to live out our faith. Now our heads are bowed. If you haven't received Jesus, um, I'd like to give you that opportunity. If you're saying, today is my day, I want to I receive Jesus as my Savior. Uh, it's, it's, it's easy. It, the scripture tells us you believe and you just receive. You say, yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. So if that's your prayer today, uh, you want to ask Jesus into your heart, could you just lift your hand up high so I can see it? Say, today's my day of, of receiving. I see that hand. Anybody else? Don't be afraid. Just lift it up high so I see that hand over there too. That's awesome. Anybody else? Two people? Okay, go ahead and put your hands down. And just pray this in your heart. And the rest of us, just be praying for these two people. Um, and then there might be some online too. So um, go ahead and bow your heads and pray this. Jesus, come into my life. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking on my sins. I receive you now. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. I now want to live for you. I give you my life. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand so people receive Jesus. So awesome, awesome.